Well, our next uh, speaker uh, is from uh, Mountain, Mountain View, California, Silicon Valley, Bay Area. The research that, that uh, Doug and his colleagues do there uh, is very important. Uh, it's, it's, there are important lessons <coughs> there for Kentucky and Kentucky's communities. It's important for Kentucky and our communities because it's, in essence, designed to provide us, I think, with a roadmap on prosperity, how to become more prosperous, how to increase, for example, in a, speaking very narrowly, per capita personal income. Kentucky's per capita personal income from 1929 is the first year that we have data. From 1929 to 1974 increased steadily. And we got to about 81% of the U.S. average, around 80 to 81% of the U.S. average in about 1974. The most recent year that we have data is 2008. Unfortunately, it's still at 81%. It's fluctuated uh, uh, within about a two percentage point range uh, between 80 and 84% since 1974. So if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to keep getting what we got. And I think what uh, Doug and his colleagues uh, have uh, discovered in some of the research is that there's a different way to do it. If you look at communities that are increasing income and successfully uh, navigating their way through this changing global economic system, uh, there's, a, there's a particular recipe. Uh, and he's going to talk about that. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Michael. It's, it is good to be here. Um, as Michael said, uh, I was very pleased when uh, he asked me to do this because uh, even though I live in California now, uh, I grew up here in uh, Kentucky. And uh, in particular, I was very pleased with the uh, award that was just given because I grew up in Versailles and I knew Vic Heller. He was a good friend of mine. So this organization, his role in that and the award that's given to him means a lot to me. And uh, I'm really pleased to see that his legacy continues. Um, the work that we do is in the economic area, but it's very relevant to the topic uh, that you've chosen for this conference, Be the Change, because our work has identified, I've worked in about 30 communities trying to help figure out, as Michael said, what is sort of the recipe for economic prosperity? And we focus a lot on economic innovation. And I'll talk about innovation and how to promote innovation across all industries and across the community. But our, our work is a discovered something, and it really is about the individual, it's about communities, and it's about teams that work together. And we've written a couple of books about this. Uh, about 10 years ago, we wrote a book called Grassroots Leaders for a New Economy. And then we recently wrote a book about how communities come together and solve issues. <coughs> and what we found was that every community that we found that have been successful, uh, and the, the question that we ask in these books is why were some communities, why were some regions particularly more successful than others? And we discovered what we call a particular type of leader, which we call civic entrepreneurs. And you know, entrepreneurs in business have a certain characteristic and are well-defined. We think that there's an equivalent to that in the civic area, and that that is the cr critical domain. So I'm going to show you and give you some ideas and some lessons from, from what we've learned. And at the end of this, I'm going to run a few videos. And actually, you're going to hear some individuals that are from all walks of life talking about what they believe it means from them, their standpoint to be a civic entrepreneur. So you'll hear it in their own voice. I think the real issue that we're faced with today is, a, uh, is not only an economic transition, but a real challenge in terms of civic leadership. First of all, we all know about globalization. You know, the world is flat, Tom Friedman, and it really has done something really significant. It doesn't just mean that things are happening in other, all, all around the world. It actually is changing the definition of place. And I believe that most emphasis is now today, the importance of place has become even more important in the global economy. Because every region, every community has to figure out how it wants to compete in that global economy. So place actually has become even more important. Now, new technologies have, have changed the way that we relate to each other. 
Now, clearly the internet has made a tremendous difference, and we heard in the previous presentation about how people are using the internet. But interestingly enough, the internet not only changes time and space, but it also allows us to operate in different ways in terms of how we speed up everything that we do. We have changing demographics. Today, leadership does not come from a small group, but it comes from a broad group of people. So we have to look at the diversity of leadership in our communities. So how do you compete in a global economy based on place? How do you use these new technologies? And how do we develop our, our communities in terms of a new leadership profile? Now, as we've worked in different regions around the country, we've discovered something which is, which is frustrating, and we call it the anonymity of civic leadership. You can go into a region, and sometimes people from this business, from uh, political world, from, from the nonprofit world, they don't actually know each other very well. And the idea of coming together as a team, as a set of civic entrepreneurs, seems to be the critical ingredient for success. So what's really necessary I think is not so much what happens at the global level or even at the state level, I think it's really regional. Regions really are the critical factor uh, in pulling together success today. And we know that traditional mechanisms of, st of business, government, civic are just not adequate because they tend to be stovepipe. What's necessary is boundary crossing, the ability to work across boundaries between business, government, community to solve these problems in a more collaborative way. The problem is that few people really know how to operate in this uh, domain, and that's why civic leadership of a different type is, is so important. So the opportunity here is a new model of leadership, and I really believe that this leadership uh, function is critical to a successful economy. It's based on collaboration, civic engagement. It's not regional government. This is where we get confused. It's not just government doing this. It's actually a whole group of people working in a new way, which in, uh, I would call governance. And you'll see how this works in a second. So what we've been documenting across the country is really a bottoms-up movement of communities and regions coming together with local leaders from all sectors recognizing the value of solving complex cross-cutting uh, problems. Sometimes we call these collaborative regional initiatives. Again, they're regional in scope, collaborative in nature, and in, most importantly, they understand the interdependence of the economy, society, and the environment, the interdependence of all three of those. And I'm going to show you in a second how those things fit together, focusing on critical outcomes. So as we've worked in different communities, we've noticed that there are four distinct conversations that go on. Sometimes they're not often connected. And what civic leaders have to do to make this work for them is to connect these conversations in an effective way. The first one is really about the innovative economy. And everybody's trying to figure this out. And I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on that, what it means to have an innovative economy. Uh, and it means how to succeed in this new economy and to ensure that everyone participates so that no one is left behind. That is what's on everybody's mind. As we go through these economic cycles, we're still trying to figure this out, particularly in a global economy. But I think connected to that is the livable community. How do you create communities where people want to live? And I think what we're seeing more and more is that where you have a creative, interesting, well-educated community, you're going to do well in your economy. So you have to have a connection between the two. We want an inclusive society. We want to make sure that all people participate. This is a practical consideration to make sure that everyone has a chance to be part of this economic uh, prosperity and also to make sure that every, everyone does, uh, no one is left out in terms of uh, uh, employment opportunities. And then I think what pulls all this together, again, is this new form of collaborative governance, which requires us to think differently about how government operates. 